Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Owen Clayton. It's really good to see so many people here. Um, so a couple of other quick practical things before I give um, this welcome talk um, and then introduce the first keynote speaker. Um, so a couple of other quick things. Um, one, I suppose, practical thing, um, if you could make sure your mobile phones are on silent, that would be appreciated. It's useful to give reminders for these things. Um, and I'm probably also reminding myself as I'm actually telling you. Um, so yeah, there we go. Um, and then the other thing is um, you'll have seen that there are post-it notes on the reception uh, desk. Um, so uh, one of the things we thought would be uh, useful um, is that there's a, a, a kind of whiteboard on the side in the corridor uh, just before you came in, sort of a hanging screen. Um, and we thought it would be useful if um, people could put uh, ideas about um, what they think needs to be done about the situation of homelessness um, that they would like conference attendees to know about. Um, so we thought if you could put those on post-it notes um, and stick them on the board and maybe that board will accumulate over the next couple of days, we thought that would be an interesting way of making sure that people were you know, feeling uh, as involved and included as possible in the, um, in the conference. So those post-it notes are on the reception desk. Um, ideas that you have, thoughts that you have about homelessness, what we might want to do about, uh, about the issue of, of homelessness and sticking those on the, 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 the sort of hanging white board screen that's on the corridor just before you come in. Um, yeah, so first of all, um, uh, intro introductions um, of the organisers. So my name is, uh, is Owen Clayton. Um, I'm a senior lecturer in English literature here at the University of Lincoln, uh, and I'm the lead organiser for this event, so I'm probably the person that most people have had some contact with. Um, I'm going to just introduce the other uh, conference organisers just so that you know who they are, so that if you have any questions, you don't all come to me. Uh, that would be useful. Um, so Nigel, who, who you just heard speaking. Um, so Nigel, raise, raise your hand again. Um, until very recently, he was the head of uh, the School of Health and Social Care um, here at Lincoln. So that's uh, Nigel uh, over there. Um, and, and we've also got uh, P Professor Peter Somerville um, here, who's another conference organiser. I'm going to introduce Peter uh, more fully in a minute because he's giving the first keynote. So if you have any questions, uh, Ni Nigel, Peter um, and myself are probably the first port of call. Um, so I'm just going to say a few words about how this conference came about, uh, what some of the aims are, uh, the kinds of things we might discuss, um, and, uh, and then introduce Peter for the first keynote. So um, yeah, I, as I mentioned, I work in the Department of uh, English uh, Literature here, so my expertise is in, well, novels. I spend quite a lot of time thinking about fictional people um, rather than real people. Um, but I wanted to do something with my research that actually had an impact in the real world and actually did um, hopefully do something for real people. Um, I'm interested in issues around class and, and transiency. Um, and I was talking to Nigel and, and Peter about, uh, about the issue of homelessness. Um, Nigel and Peter come from a more sort of social and public policy perspective, and I'm uh, from the humanities. And we were talking about whether it would be possible to have an event that brought together different disciplines to talk about the issue of homelessness, which is something that doesn't typically happen in conferences um, on this topic. And, and crucially, we also wanted to reach kind of beyond academia as well. So we wanted to reach to you know the charities and other organisations that do so, many, so much good work in this area. And crucially and critically, we wanted wanted to make sure that people who've experienced homelessness were an equal and active part of the discussion that their voices were heard, because so often this can be a conversation about that group, right? Um, and, and so that was really important um, that f for us that we included and have this kind of multidisciplinary, but also outside academia, and, and having people who are actually also themselves experienced homelessness involved in the discussion. So our, our conversation kind of revolved around this question of representation. Um, which is a term that you know has multiple meanings. Um, so for me, in the work that I do in my kind of day job, you know, representation often is, is about representation in novels and in films and TV and maybe newspapers as well. So I would ask questions like, you know, how are how is a homeless person represented in this text and and so on. Um, but we're also in this conference interested in other meanings of the term representation. Um, so representation in the political, in the legal, or in the civic sense. Um, you know, what about the law, right, which is a, a kind of text, and what about how that represents homeless people? Or what does it mean to represent someone, right, to stand in for them, um, to talk for them with all the potential dangers that might be involved in that, in a governmental situation, or as part of a charity, or some other kind of organisation? 
And if we're going to talk about representation, then we need to talk about self-representation, right? So how do people with experience of homelessness think about the, these questions? How do homeless people, and I'll talk about that term in a minute, represent their situation to themselves, to each other, to those who have never experienced homelessness, or in the media, or in their own artistic or documentary work, and so on? Um, and, you know, we often see images in the media, in government and in charity representations of, you know, homeless people. And often, you know, these are posters, these are ad campaigns, and they often, you know, the kinds of images I'm talking about. They show typically, you know, helpless looking homeless people, um, people sleeping on the streets uh, or passed out on drugs or begging maybe with arms upheld. I remember there was a poster here at the University of Lincoln saying, you know, not to give to people. And it had this image of somebody, you know, get, in this very kind of helpless pose, this very passive looking pose. Um, I remember that poster very well because I took it down. Um, uh, and research has suggested that such images um, which are used in charity campaigns um, are more likely to generate money for the, for the charity. But, you know, do such images also do social harm by portraying homeless people as either helpless cases or as passive victims? Um, I mean, I would argue that they do. Um, oh, we might want to debate and discuss that. Um, and this is one reason why we chose the work um, of the photo photographer Anthony uh, Luvera, um, whose images are on our website. Um, you'll have seen this image on the poster, but on the website we've got you know, lots of these different images. Um, and you can see uh, you know, from these images um, the difference. These are self-portraits, right? You, can, you, can, you see the little detail uh, you see the little, little detail here. This is a person taking an image of himself, right? This person has agency. This person decided when to take this image. And we felt that this was in stark contrast to the stereotypical representations of homeless people that we do see, um, the visual represent representations in particular. Um, I don't want to talk too much about Anthony's work because he is um, actually going to be talking about his own work himself uh, in the final session, which is happening uh, tomorrow afternoon at the very end of the conference. Um, or at least he is provided that the video link to Latvia works because that's where he is right now. Um, um, so, uh, so why are we having this conference now? And what might we achieve in the next couple of days? Um, I guess the reasons are pretty obvious. Um, you know, statistics in this area are notoriously unreliable, but there is little doubt that the problem of homelessness is growing and has been doing so for some time. Um, and this includes, most obviously, visible homelessness, rough sleeping or rooflessness, uh, as it's sometimes referred to, but also invisible homelessness, such as couch surfing, temporary accommodation, and, and so on. Um, and equally obvious is that our policies on a governmental and local level are inadequate. Um, our cities are increasingly designed around consumerism, um, so specifically you know, shopping and, and tourism in some cases. And in that context, you know, rough sleepers are seen as nuisances. They're seen as eyesores that kind of get in the way of people having a good shopping experience. And they need to be removed or moved on. And in removing homeless people from public space on the grounds of public protection, the police, it seems to me, overlook the fact that homeless people are the public. They're not a separate group. Um, being simply moved on, um, perhaps being unable to then meet the conditions offered by charities or local councils for help due to addiction or other issues, often leads people to be less safe than they were before. So it's a funny kind of public protection. But there is also a desire to do something. Um, I think one manifestation of this is a growing sense that the 1824 Vagrancy Act, which makes it illegal to be out in the open without visible means of support, um, is outdated and needs to go. Um, as many people in this room already know, vagrancy is a status crime. Uh, it's a, it punishes a state of being rather than an action. You do not actually have to do anything in order to be arrested for vagrancy. It's kind of fairly unique in that regard. And, and this act, 1824, is so old we can't even call it Victorian. Um, it's Georgian. Um, and one, one question for this conference, um, which uh, Martin Martin from um, Crisis is going to be discussing in more detail tomorrow, you know, is, is how can we ensure that that Vagrancy Act, the 1824 Act, does not make it to its 200th birthday? And then also I'm thinking about, well, what might replace it? 
Um, it seems to me that we need to ensure the Act is not simply replaced with anti-begging or anti-rough sleeping or other public nuisance orders, which kind of basically replicate the same problems that we currently have, people simply being moved on and moved on and moved on. Um, instead, we need to in uh, change the law to ensure that all citizens have the right to housing in the area where they currently reside, making sure that there is a proper safety net um, for people. Um, now, thinking again about the question of representation here, the Vagrancy Act uh, represents transients, um, homeless people, if you like, as, quote, rogues and vagabonds, end quote. That's the language of the 1824 Vagrancy Act, rogues and vagabonds. That 19th century language, which is still on the statute book in England and Wales, um, turns people without permanent accommodation into a kind of dehumanised other, right, a group that is kind of separate from and supposedly inferior to, I guess, um, supposedly normal people. And this kind of othering, um, it's only one example, but this kind of othering is inherent to how people who have experienced homelessness have been portrayed. Othered representations are therefore a crucial theme for us in this conference, it seems to me. And one question I would be interested in hearing people discuss, if you're interested in, in discussing it as well, is how can we break down the artificial barrier that our society throws up between homeless people, so-called, and everyone else? And this then leads to other questions. In using the term homeless people, as I've been doing, and is often the case in public discourse, is that the right term to use? Um, the rooflessness is sometimes used. And what do we mean by homelessness? Because having a roof, having a house, may not be the same as having a home. For many people, perhaps particularly those fleeing abuse, the streets are the home. And does this mean that ending homelessness is even the right aim? But if it is, is housing the only issue? How do homeless people think we should end homelessness? Has anyone ever asked? Okay, um, two more slightly uh, more prosaic things uh, for me before, from me before I uh, pass over to Peter for the first keynote. Um, so first, I'd like to say a very quick thank you, this is the thank you part, uh, to the British Academy uh, and also to the University of Lincoln for funding this event. Um, and we wouldn't be here without, without the funding from both those organisations. Thank you to everybody um, who is helping out with the conference, from the technical support, we've got Rob uh, at the back there, uh, and also to our excellent volunteers, uh, who you'll have met, uh, some of whom you'll have met already. And of course, thank you for you all coming to take part in this discussion. Um, second, um, uh, just a quick, a quick note, can those people who are chairing please make sure that people keep the time as much as possible for the panel sessions, it's about 15 minutes each, we should hopefully have about 20 minutes of questions. Um, when, uh, and then the final thing, when audience members do speak, and um, we have a question about whether or not we want to use mics, I'm not entirely sure whether we completely need it, but we'll see, um, for, for the panel sessions and the Q&A. Um, uh, when audience members do speak, if you feel comfortable doing this, and only if you feel comfortable doing this, um, please say who you are. Um, and I know this because I'm, you know, I've had contact with most people here and I'm the only person who has. Um, many people in this room have experienced homelessness themselves. Um, so it seems to me that one way we can break down the stigma and barrier of that um, is, if, and again, only if you feel comfortable doing so, is if that does apply to you, um, you know, please, please, there's no stigma or shame that should be attached to you saying that. Um, again, only if you feel comfortable doing so, but it seems to me that's one way we can potentially break down some, some barriers. Um, so first, I'm going I'm to kick off. I'm going to say I haven't been homelessness myself. Um, however, several very close members of my family have. Um, so I have experienced this issue personally at very close hand uh, myself. So there you go. There's me kicking off. Um, okay. Um, I'm now going to turn uh, to uh, uh, introduce uh, Professor Peter Somerville, um, who is going to give us our first um, keynote. Um, so, uh, Peter Somerville um, is Professor of Social Policy at the University of Lincoln. Um, he had a career in housing management um, before becoming a lecturer. Um, he has completed many research projects on homelessness, um, including on life histories of homeless people. Um, his books include uh, Interpreting Rurality, Multidisciplinary Approaches, um, Understanding Community, Politics, Policy and Practice, and a graphic novel, um, Somewhere Nowhere, Lives Without Homes. <laughs> 